Ben, there is no way in hell <clears throat> you can remotely convince me that a black man shoots a white kid in the head and while he's laying down, shoots him in the chest and, oh, yeah, we bring him in and then he, then he walks free. There is no way that happens. The only reason this man is charged today is because this story has gone national and folks have been protesting in that neighborhood. You're absolutely correct, Roland Martin. It was the national outrage, uh, the advocacy on attorney merit and our legal teams, like bombarding the prosecutor, having people call them and say, how is it acceptable that a black 17-year-old presses the doorbell and the white owner of the home shoot him in the head and then shoots him a second time, as you said, Roland, while he's on the ground and had his arm not been there, we might not be talking about a miracle that saved Ralph Ural's life. And so this is asinine for them to even hold it for this long because it could have been a FedEx worker, an Amazon worker, Roland, and they simply go press the doorbell and their profile and shot in the head because a white person feels threatened. Because, you know, they always talk about stand your ground and counsel doctrine. And the final point I think is germane here, Roland Martin, is it harkens back to Trayvon where his killer got to sleep in his bed at night and even closer to present, Ahmaud Aubrey where they saw the video. The police saw the video and still accepted the white shooter's word for it and let them go home and sleep in their beds. So we know it's nothing new. What they're doing is two justice systems in America, one for black America and another for white America. Uh, you, know, you know, Ben, this reminds me of the case out of Michigan, 2014. Uh, where a 14-year-old Brennan Walker was shot by Jeffrey Ziegler, a retired firefighter, after Walker missed the bus and knocked on uh, Ziegler's door. Ziegler only received 10 years in prison for assault with an attempt to commit murder. Uh, they actually, uh, earlier this year, granted him parole from prison. I mean, and this, I mean, again, this is, so these folks, you know, again, no threat, is that like Jarl or even in the case uh, where Ziegler, I mean, he wasn't sitting here trying to steal anything. I mean, these folks come out of their uh, house, uh, you know, uh, shoot first. And you saw, the, you saw the video we're playing right there where Ziegler comes out with a shotgun uh, and it's only because that kid is only alive. Uh, Brennan Walker is only alive because he took off running. This guy fires his gun, fires his gun at him down the street. And in this case, in, in, involving Yarl, he's just at the door. No threat whatsoever. This guy, sh fire first, ask questions later. Yeah. And, and you hit it right on the point, Roland Martin. We've been talking about this conversation now for 20 years uh, because you always cover these matters. And I love how you remind us of the historical nature of it since they're trying to outlaw teaching black history in the schools. We got to have programs that remind us about the past black history and the not so past black history because all of it is relevant. Because if we forget about Trayvon, we forget about Ahmaud Arbery, we forget about Ziegler shooting at that young man in Michigan, then they act like, well, this is novel. This is something new. And we can justify this Andrew Lester shooting 16-year-old Ralph Ewer in the head because he felt in fear of his life. No, that was the impetus for Black Lives Matter when they said it was Trayvon Martin that got away with it. And so we can never let them get away with this again. And, and of course, uh, Ben, to listen to the police chief say, oh, we had to wait to, uh, to get a statement from the victim. He was almost killed! Yeah, yeah. And Roland, what's so asinine about that is if he would have died, are you telling me you could have not arrested the shooter because you couldn't take a statement from him? It's ludicrous 
they they want us to believe that, you know, well, I can't say what they want us to believe, Roland, but you know, it is asinine. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's, it's just absolutely crazy. And, and again, these things, uh, they happen over and over and over again. Uh, ben, the uh, GoFundMe originally was $750,000. It got raised to a million five. They've already raised about a million three. Uh, you've talked with the family and just, so what is your, what's the, what's the latest on your all's condition? You know, Roland, uh, we just talked to President Biden uh, less than 35 minutes ago, right before the DA came and announced his charges. And, uh, you know, obviously he's going to miss a lot of time from school, but this is a brilliant young man. I mean, just even though he's talking slow, just to hear him interact with President Biden, you can tell that this young man is a miracle. He's a, a honor roll student at the top of his class. He plays the clarinet. He wants to be a, a computer engineer, I'm sorry, engineer, a mechanical engineer. And he has his whole future ahead of him. It was nothing but the grace of God how this young man is living after being shot in the head. And so it was appropriate for the prosecutor to charge him. And the only tragedy was that it took so long for them to charge him. But he is, keep him in your prayers. He's not out the woods yet. And we know his medical bills are going to be uh, astronomical. Uh, again, so you're saying about 40 minutes ago, President Biden, he did talk to Ralph, you and his family. Um, and it, Ralph is able to talk? Ralph was able to talk and try to answer his questions best he could. But even in a slow, slurish voice, you heard how brilliant Ralph Ura was. He is an exceptional young person. All right. Uh, and so, Ben, uh, first of all, that phone call, how long was the phone call with President Biden? About 20 to 25 minutes. Uh, and so you're getting breaking news because I don't even know if the White House has put it out yet that President Biden talked to him, his mother, his aunt, and uh, Ralph and the uh, other people were in the room. Uh, and so the so the president uh, phoned the family, talked with Ralph Yarl and his family for about 20 to 25 minutes today. That was about 40, 40 or so uh, minutes ago. And Ralph was able to communicate with the president. He was. Uh, he called my cell phone, and uh, I then passed him through to the family. And uh, he said when Ralph gets well and everything, he welcomes him to visit the White House. Okay. Ben Crump, uh, we certainly appreciate it. Thank you so very much uh, with that latest news. Hey, love you, brother. Thank you. Appreciate it, Ben. Thanks a lot. All right, folks, back to our Roland Martin Unfiltered video in just one moment. When you talk about blackness and what happens in black culture, we're about covering these things that matter to us, uh, speaking to our issues and concerns. This is a genuine people-powered movement. There's a lot of stuff that we're not getting. You get it, and you spread the word. We wish to plead our own cause to long have others spoken for us. We cannot tell our own story if we can't pay for it. This is about uh, covering us. Invest in Black-owned media. Your dollars matter. We don't have to keep asking them to cover our stuff. So please support us in what we do, folks. We want to hit 2,000 people, $50 this month, raise $100,000. We're behind 100000 so we want to hit that. Y'all money makes this possible. Check some money orders. Go to P.O. Box 57196, Washington, D.C., 20037-0196. The cash app is dollar sign RM Unfiltered. PayPal is R Martin Unfiltered. Venmo is RM Unfiltered. Zelle is rolling at rollingsmartin.com.